Hey guys, I want to talk about testing today. So personally, I actually hate testing. I don't really test any of my React stuff at all, except for one testing technique. I actually want to start doing more because I think it's pretty useful. But what I, I want to talk about today is uh, the type of testing I think is decent. And if you wanted to test what I would recommend doing and just some libraries to check out and to use um, if you want to test how you can test. So I actually really like what uh, Create React app recommends for testing. And this is their little bit on testing right here. I recommend checking it out. It's interesting and I like their what, what they recommend. And it is, the first thing they recommend is what's called a smoke test. And I'm gonna go over how to test React components for Create React app. And it'll be similar for most React applications. So they recommend doing a smoke test, which basically means they just render the whole application and see if it breaks, um, which I think is a decent test. It requires no work, right? This is super easy to run. And actually, um, I have a Create React app open right here, and it actually comes default. This is the default test it gives you, so that's nice. And it also recommends using um, Enzyme. And if you don't know what Enzyme is, it basically lets you um, render just one component. So you can see shallow, and then we get the app. So it's only rendering the component on a single level. If you have components within components, it's only getting that first level. And you can do this, this what smoke test to make sure it works with any number of components. So I'll show you that real quick. So I'm gonna add, this is my project, do yarn add enzyme. And real quick actually, before I even show you guys um, enzyme, I wanna, if you do not know how to run a test, if you just go to a create react app in the uh, folder of your project, if you do npm test, it'll actually run uh, jest, well, that just broke. Um, I, I think it's because this is running. But what's supposed to happen is Jest runs and will actually run all tests um, that have the dot .test. So anything you see with dot .test in your React application or additionally app.spec.js, these are all tests. And when you run uh, npm test, it will run these tests that are in those folders. And I think it talks about it in Create React App, um, what exactly you can name them. I don't see it here, but there's a whole list of what you can name your files. That way they can get tested. Personally, I like either using the name test or spec for testing components. And I would do this naming convention, app, and then app.test.js if you're testing app. Okay, so Enzyme is done. Let's see if npm test goes and cool. So this is what the runner looks like. It'll run the test and it'll tell you whether or not they pass. And then it gives you some options of here of what you can run. Um, it doesn't have A, but if you type A, it'll actually rerun all of them. Um, and then just Q to get out of it. And so that's how you run the test you create. And so I can create another test here if I wanted to. Um, I could say uh, shallow renders without crashing, and we can import shallow from Enzyme. And then instead of doing the whole DOM, what we will do is just do shallow. And then we can rerun it, our tests. And you can keep this window open, so I'm gonna keep this up now. Uh, and I can just do run all. So it failed, so something broke. Um, shallow, we're doing shallow just like they do here. And shallow is imported from Enzyme, cool. So let's see what, what's happening. Uh, React DOM and React test render are implicit dependencies when using this, please add the appropriate versions. Oh, so I just don't have a dependency. 
this looks like you need react dom which i should have in react test render okay so it looks like you need to install that when you're doing an enzyme as well so let's add that um, but after i get this done what you would do is for example if i create another file like my component and then let's say my component it imports react from react and then real simple export default and then let's just say it says hi if i wanted to make a test for this i would create a new file here and i would call it my comp dot test and then in here i would just copy what is in that to start off oops didn't like how i copied it how did i just copy that there we go and so i would import you wouldn't want to do either of these guys you need to have re react in here so i would do my comp and have my comp here so we're importing our function and now let's say this is not the root, right? We can't do like this DOM render thing. This is where a shallow render is important. So we can shallow render our component, make sure it works. And let's do npm test to make sure everything is good. And it is. So you'll notice we ran two um, tests, test three total. It ran app.test and my comp and everything passed. Now what you can do is you can actually say, um, you know, you can render this and then you can check for different things, like checking whether it has different properties. And if we come on over here to Enzyme, they have more, uh, the Enzymes read me, they have more advanced uh, things. But basically you render your component and then you can check for different things. They're checking for properties, um, hrefs different attributes on components and stuff you can do that I don't think it's that useful though personally I don't really like testing this way that much um, but if you're interested I recommend looking more into enzyme and uh, this library here I believe it's called Synon don't know how to say it for sure but what this is good for is spies so it's looking at the values of functions and mocking stuff and getting what the value of different objects are. I actually have not used it before because I don't like testing, but uh, I've heard good things about this and you can see an enzyme they're using it as well. So I recommend checking out those two, but personally what I like doing is snap snapshot testing. This is something by Jess that makes it super, super easy to test. Um, so I'm gonna show you that right now. So how it works is we can come into here we can copy and paste and let's put our render at the top so we import render here and what we can do is we can do render.create and then we pass in our component so app is our component and then we can create a snapshot we can check it against the snapshot and now we don't have a snapshot well you can see it just created one uh, cool thing about Jest is when it makes changes, it automatically reruns it. So you can saw I didn't come over here and change it and stuff, but we ran four tests now because I just added this one. But how the snapshot works is it just create a snapshot of what my app looks like. Now if I come and change the snapshot or my code, I can save. It'll rerun the test and it'll be like, hey, something changed. Welcome used to be like this and now it's like this. And it tells you, hey, something broke. So you can take snapshots of what you want your component to look like. Um, and then if something changes, you know about it right away. So now if I put it back, it matches the snapshot. So you know if you like introduce something that changes a different component, you didn't think would have changed it. So you can create a snapshot like this of each one. So I can also add a snapshot of my component. So we can copy the render or two. And then it renders correctly. And here is my component. And you'll notice uh, if you look under, 
it will create a new folder called snapshots. And here is actually where it's taking a snapshot of what your component looks like. Now, let's say I actually make a change, like instead of welcome to react, I want to change it to welcome to react 3.34.13 or whatever, I don't know, some version number, we're getting an error. But this is, we want to change it to this. This is not us accidentally changing the component. What you can do is you can quit out of this and you can run npm. Uh, actually, you don't, you need to go into package.json and add a new one here. So we need to run jest u and that will update all the snapshots. So maybe update snapshots. So now I can do npm run update snapshots and jest is not found. I thought it would find jest as a dependency. Let's see, do I have jest installed globally? Oh, yes I do. Let's see, running jest u. Okay, I don't even have jest installed here. Okay, so I thought I had just as a dev dependency. I don't, so I'm going to do yarn dev just to install it. Um, so now I can run that command, hopefully. Run update snapshots. And just is still not found. I just added it as a dev dependency. And I don't need, actually, what happened? Oh, I didn't do add, I just did dev. And we need to add dev here. That's how you just install a dev dependency, my bad. Okay, when that's done, we should be able to rerun this. Um, but what that will do is with the dash u command, it should say, so you can do dash dash update snapshot, or you can do dash u flag, that'll regenerate the snapshots like it says. And so they'll be updated here, so then your tests will no longer fail when you run it. So let's see if we can get that going. npm run update. And just failed. Oh, I think it didn't like it. That's fine. Let's do npm test. I think it still updated the snapshots, maybe. And no, snaps are not failed. Uh, same thing. It doesn't have the 34U. I don't know how to, so actually create React app uses, um, is using Jest. I shouldn't use this as a, I actually installed Enzyme here, but Enzyme should be a dev dependency. Same with this one. So I'm gonna do yarn add dev. So first I'm gonna do yarn remove enzyme and what is this one called react test render react test render and I'm going to reinstall them as dev dependencies and then so I just I you just saw me run jest and it failed like npm update snapshots failed and I think the reason for that is because we're missing these as dev dependencies add but I'll make sure. But so basically create React app um, installs Jest for you with React scripts. So that's why you didn't see Jest here before. So I'm not sure how to tell the Jest that React or React scripts uses to update snapshots. Um, maybe if I do test, which yeah, I don't know actually. Let's see if this works now. Or if it fails. Let's see what the failure is. Test suite failed to run. Oh, you know what? I think it's just syntax. Yeah. It doesn't recognize it as JSX. That's just because Jess is being, you need to configure Jess to work. So what I'm gonna try this may not work at all. npm test with dash u flag. 
and that didn't even go. So you, you notice how when I ran that, I think if I run it maybe like that, it'll pass it in. If I scroll, oh bam, guys, it worked. I was not expecting that to work, but it does. Okay, so f forget what I was telling you uh, about installing Jest. We can do yarn remove Jest. Don't do this update snapshots here. What you want to do if you want to update snapshots, notice how we're, the tests are all passing now. If you want to update it, do npm test dash 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 u. So you'll notice when I ran npm test, what really gets run is this. Um, so if you don't push the dash dash here, it will not add the dash u flag to this command. We want the dash u flag. The dash u flag is not for npm test, right? It is for this right here. And that's important. So if that, if that doesn't make sense, either way, you want to run this command to update snapshots. So now if we just do npm test, we're passing. And just to recap, if I'm accidentally changing something, it's going to get caught and tell me, hey, you messed this up. And now if I want to like make it permanent, like maybe I want to upgrade to 14, we get it wrong here. Just do npm test, u, and then we're going to be passing our tests. So bam. That's it, guys. Just want to do a quick thing on tests. Sorry that did not work right away, but that's how coding works. So um, yeah, so I, I'm going to be using probably snapshot testing a little bit. But even then, I'm not going to use it a ton. Personally, I just don't like testing. I don't like using it that much. I find it slows me down. And a lot of times, I just keep changing what my component's going to do. And I'm constantly changing the tests. And the tests don't feel like they're useful. So if something feels useful, I'll test it. But so far, I haven't been in a scenario where it feels useful to test a component. So that's kind of where I'm at with testing. But if you are interested in getting more involved with it, I highly recommend these two libraries. Look more into that. You can do some interesting tests with those. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.